Good afternoon and welcome to the Software Engineering Institute's webinar series. My name is Shane McGraw and I'd like to thank you all for attending today's webinar. Our webinar series presentation today is Securing Global Software Supply Chains by Robert Ellison. Uh, thank you. I'd like to welcome those who are uh, attending today. Um, we actually we have a, a polling question uh, now to start. Uh, oh, excuse me, we already got past that one. Let's define what we mean by the supply chain. Uh, in general, we're looking at anyone who can touch uh, the content of that software product and have the opportunity to modify it. Uh, the work was motivated in part by the Comprehensive National Security Initiative Number 11 in terms of the government interest, both federal agencies and the DOD, to understand the risks they face in terms of the global supply chain. Okay, folks, and another quick polling question for you here. We'd like to know is how's your organization had a problem with software malware in the last year? Okay, a pr pretty even mix there, Bob. Uh, the majority of don't know. What would you say to somebody that doesn't know? Who who they contact to find out if that was a problem or? Usually, your IT operations, the operational folks, would be the ones to who would know that. Uh, sometimes it's it's the stakeholders of a particular application who have had understood the consequences, but. Uh, that's usually where the information would lie. Okay. okay, thanks for that, folks. Well, what we're going to cover today, in part, we're looking at um, the software side of the supply chain, and the difficulties there are partly it's very complex, and we really don't have a lot of information. We're going to look at a general strategy that, mostly from the acquirer's perspective, but what they may should do, and we're going to spend some time with some examples. Uh, that, that I think illustrates some of the activities that uh, acquirers could do in terms of managing that supply chain. Now the risks, uh, certainly on the hardware side, uh, pretty well known. You're looking at uh, manufacturing uh, delays, you're looking at delivery disruptions, uh, you're certainly on the manufacturing side, you've got the quality, and, and actually there's been uh, estimates, I've seen this repeatedly, uh, that essentially 10% of the hardware that being obtained now is counterfeit. Uh, the advantage you have on the hardware side is you really been, we've been collecting data there for decades, so there's a good deal of information to draw on. On the software side, uh, certainly the, the threats are third-party tampering. Uh, you may have a malicious supplier in terms of uh, counterfeit software, but the fact the highest risk right now on the supply chain, software supply chain chain, is simply the mistakes we're introducing ourselves in terms of vulnerabilities. For the most part, the attacker doesn't necessarily have to compromise the supply chain. There are usually ample opportunities for them to really insert malware, taking advantage of all the exploitable uh, design and coding errors. Now, the difficulty is, if you think of the hardware, if you were interested in just-in-time inventory, you would simply have a large number of organizations you could visit, collect data, do analysis and comparisons. Um, on the software side, we're making a start. Uh, Fortify and Citigo uh, over the last year have gone and interviewed, um, they started with 10 organizations that are now up to 30 and say, what do you do for security and secure software? What are your practices uh, that you are using? And so you're having a start that says we've collected what organizations do. We don't yet know are these good, which are the best approaches, but we're starting to build a base of evidence. Here's what's going on. Now, if you looked at the supply chain, if we were to do the same thing, we'd want to say, let's find 10, 20 examples of software supply chains that deliver relatively secure software. We're just not to that point that we have that kind of evidence. So we're looking at situations where on hardware, ample evidence, on software, we're very early in the process. The complexity is, is sort of one of the drivers. If you look at, let's say, a typical DOD acquisition, um, the gray area where you, you probably have some information being exchanged, program office, prime contractor, some knowledge of the development methodology being used, um, but even for the prime contractor, as they go out, look at subcontractors, suppliers for COTS, uh, for a variety of reasons, they don't have enough very much information about those subcontractors. Part of it simply is intellectual property. Uh, the contractors don't necessarily want to share that much information about details of how they do their work. Um, 
And as you look further down that chain, it usually doesn't stop at one level. I mean, you simply have a sequence of suppliers and subcontractors and more. And the difficulty is that some mistake anywhere in that chain can be inherited by the final product. Uh, so we have a difficulty of lots of places that we need to watch, but very incomplete information. And the digital complication is hardware, we're making lots of one unit. We're, we're really doing things by thousands, ten thousands, or whatever. Software, the supply end is really a one-off. We're looking at something for a single uh, system and not necessarily find things that we can compare across multiple supply chains. So hopefully. We